What is going on world? I'm Wesley from A Connection TV, the network, the one channel on YouTube where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences. And the similar connection that I want you guys to adopt with me right here, right now, is with Scamming, the latest episode entitled Inside the Bubble. Now, this is episode three, and I think that we finally get back to the root of scandal. Okay? And the definition of scandal. We finally get back to the old formula where I remember watching Scandal and every single scene gave me something new to go, oh, what? Not, not what? Yes, bitch, yes, God. You know, <laughs> I was watching this episode and I just got finished watching it just now because yesterday I had, I buried myself alive um, with Destiny, with playing Destiny for PS4. I was off yesterday. I had a lot of stuff that I was supposed to do, but I did not do that. I opted to play Destiny. And shout out to Kenny from Cali and shout out to Carl from Canada. Kenny watches my channel, watches my, my YouTube uh, for my reviews. And um, I did make a video saying that if you have Destiny for PS4 to hit me up. And that's what he did. Kenny is a cool dude. So shout out to you, bruh. Um, so I was playing that. Now, if you if you are a gamer, Okay, and you're into Destiny, not nah, you, and you don't have Destiny, you need to get Destiny. Let me just say that. But on to this episode. <laughs> I found myself screaming at my screen as I'm watching Scandal Inside the Bubble on my DVR. We started this particular episode off. Now, I got my notes. I'm, I'm going to go down the list of notes and just comment on everything. Okay. Um, Olivia visits her father because she feels out of place. She has decided to go way off and gallivant with Jake um, and on an island. She's been gone for two months, and when she comes back, she's been forgotten. Not forgotten, but people have moved on and have moved on without her. And things are different now. Abby's not at the firm anymore. Huck is reeling himself back in. Quinn is trying to find her space. Harrison's not here anymore. She's not talking to the president. Like, there's a lot of different things going on. And it's all been moving along without her. So she feels some sort of way. I can understand that because if I ever go back to uh, New York, and it's been actually going, it's going on two months. If I go back to New York and just things are just different and, and I'm gonna feel like some sort of way. That, that's what happens when you leave home and then you just come back and things are just different. So she had the audacity to visit her father. I say audacity because I don't care. Father, mother, her parents have put her through some shit. Point blank period. So I, that's why I, see, I don't understand how certain people, like, they can't get over the tie. Okay, father, daughter, yes. But has he been a father lately? Really? Had the, the stuff that he has done, does that warrant him the title to, to hold as father? And same for the mother, but whatever. Dysfunctional family situation, that's what I'm going to call it. It makes for good fucking TV. But there's no way on God's green earth that I... Anyways, I can't adopt that similar connection despite our differences live. But she visits her father, and her father reads her down, okay? Like he always does. And says, come to dinner and bring Jake. What? <laughs> See, this is the shit I can't do. Hi, what happened? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Bring Jake. After everything that you done put this man through, you're inviting him to dinner? Why? Because you're the father to the girl that she's screwing? What? I, I, I'm not here for all that. And I just was lost in translation when he said that. I couldn't believe he said that. Um, Jake walks up to Charlie and smashes his head into a vending machine because he's trying to get answers and looking into Harrison's death and who had Harrison killed and why did Harrison die? Hmm. Did y'all think it was the father? I swear that I didn't think it had anything to do with the father, but you know Shonda and her rhymes, she be making it click all the goddamn time. Jay gets Quinn to visit Charlie in a locked warehouse all night. I wouldn't have been made, but then again, Quinn has... <sighs> Well, she had an obsession with Charlie. They had an obsession, an obsession with each other because they had no one else 
but each other. But, you know, Quinn is stronger and tougher now and says thank you and she whooped his motherfucking ass when he tried to make a move and I was really appreciating the fact that Quinn is no longer a weakling. I was appreciating that fact. And she says to him, I am not alone. I have Liv, I have Huck, and I have Abby, and I have... Who, who else did she mention? She mentioned somebody else. I'm like, really? Do you really have them? Oh, she said I have Jake. I was thinking to myself, like, huh? You have Jake. Uh uh. Nobody has Jake but Olivia's vagina. Okay, let's call it a spade. What? So we get past that. And uh, I was really annoyed at the fact that Quinn and, and Charlie are laying down on the concrete and he's sitting there confessing his loneliness to her. And then they turn to each other and she's like, like I said, I'm not lonely, blah, blah, blah. And then they start making out. See, that's the weird, what's with this weird stuff? Like, my father has killed people, but he's my father, so I love him. And now we're going to eat dinner with my boyfriend that he tortured. I tricked Quinn into stabbing a man and making him foam at the mouth. I, I played her around like a rag doll, but we're kissing on the ground. I just, this show, I just, I, <laughs> I can't, I can't with it. Um, Melly wants to investigate the murder, the murderer Cliff wife, murderer Cliff wife, whatever title they gave her. Um, and I'm like, oh, poor Melly. Melly needs to be involved in, in something. She needs to soak her hands into something other than thinking about the death of her son. I feel bad for her. Like, you can't tell someone when to get over a death in their family. You can't tell someone how to mourn. You just can't. They just have to get through it on their own. And, you know, even if they can't deal with it on their own, like, if you're a friend, you have to be there for them. However long it takes, you just have to be there for them. If they're your friend. So I'm gonna leave Melly alone on that. But that whole scene when she when she uh, had the meeting and Abby, I mean Gabby, I mean Red, whatever they decide to call her now, um, was trying to get Fitz to understand what was about to happen. D Melly called <laughs> the she called the head of house of every household. The head of the HBI, HBI, the head of the FBI, the head of agriculture, the head of the uh, NASA, the head of everybody. She called everybody down to this meeting for this. <laughs> like we, like we do not have anything better to do, like anything else better to do. Really? Yeah, I was like, get out of here, Melly. Get out of here. And then when Fitz walked in. <laughs> when Fitz walked in the <laughs> And he was shocked. He was like, oh, hey, Nick. Oh, uh, hey, Will. Calling him by the first name and shit. I was like, that shit was hilarious. I'm like, wow, and I feel so bad for Melly when she found out that the case was closed and like she really called all of these people down here for this little ass case. She felt so, and she had packets and shit ready. <laughs> she said, she said with the help, I'm sorry, I said I wasn't gonna laugh at Melly, but this shit was funny. She said with the help of the people from Nassau, we was able to. <laughs> To drop the trajectory of how he fell. If he was pushed, he would have went to point B. But since he slipped, he would have... What? I was like, oh my God. First of all, why was they standing on the cliff arguing or talking in T-Way? Uh-uh. There's no gate. There's no guardrail. Let's... 20 feet back. 20 feet back. Because even... Like, it'd be crazy when people be standing on, on the cliff, at the edge of the cliff, and it'd be gusts of wind. Uh -uh. I'm not that heavy, so wind can move my little ass. I just be, it'll just be my day. Okay? My luck. Okay? I'm sitting here trying to marvel at the view. And then all of a sudden, a, a gust of wind comes carrying my little skinny ass off the cliff because I want to marvel at the view of nature. Hell, fuck out of here. What? I was like, uh-uh. But that whole thing, I felt bad for Melly at the end. When Abby saved her, that was cute, though. Abby saved her. That was cute. It's crazy that people don't know uh, Abby's name, but 
she fixes that at the end when she gets fits together. And see, that was crazy because she has been trying to get inside this bubble for the longest. Not even for the longest. Well, yeah, probably for the longest. But she's been trying to fit in and no one calls her Abby except for Melly. Once, I mean, once Abby got Melly together, she, you know, she got the name correct. But then, you know, Abby has to get fits together and says, oh, by the way, I'm Scottish. But the kicker to this is, Fitz don't want to sit down and talk to you about the good work that you've been doing, Abby. Fitz wants to talk to you about Olivia and how is she doing. I was like, damn, that was a punch in the throat if ever there was one. Fitz whooped Abby's ass in this particular scene. Straight out. Whooped. <laughs> whooped up her eye like blinds out of her. That was fucked up. Cyrus and this hooker. Now, see... I've, only thing I've ever paid for that has been remotely sensual is a massage. Because you have to pay for, well, you know, always, I've gotten some free massages. But <laughs> but paying for sex, that's a bit extreme. Mm-hmm, that's a, that's a bit extreme. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I don't know about all of that. I don't know about all of that. But sensual massages are nice. Um, but Cyrus having to pay twenty for pay twenty five hundred dollars, twenty five hundred dollars, twenty twenty five hundred dollars for this dude. Which, by the way, he is not. He ain't. He's not all of that at all. And when he laid down on the thing like this, and you see the little. Going down, I'm like, okay, they they being bold with showing, whatever. I was just like, what, Cyrus? Come on, really? But you know, Cyrus is lonely. He doesn't have his husband anymore. So sometimes you do what you feel that you have to do. If you think it's going to be discreet and and no one's going to find out about it, and it's just between you and this person, and sometimes you do what you feel that you have to do. And you know, I just I don't know. I, I don't know. That 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 was kind of sad. Um, when Fitz started to lose the gun control thing, and he spoke to Rosen, and then Rosen got some gajones and went scandal on his ass, and pulled pulled some back history of the judge's um, murder case, and you know the judge ended up killing himself. I'm like, damn, Rosen, this is what you wanted. This is exactly what you wanted. You said you wanted this job. You got this job. Now because of you. And going below the belt, you have been the reason why someone killed themselves. Like, he's not going to be able to live that down at all. And I'm surprised. I, I, can't even, I can't even see how he's been okay after everything that has occurred. He's fine and working and stuff. Like, that's just not something regular that you see. Just people shot in the head and then you threatened. And I, I, I don't know. Um, now this whole case for the episode with uh, Catherine and Caitlin, and Catherine hires Olivia, which is uh, their their work. They were friends in law school, along with Abby, to investigate the whereabouts of Caitlin, um, her now husband's daughter. Um, the, the baby, the scandal was that. See, that's why I said scandal returned on episode three because that was a scandal. If ever there was one, that was a particular scandal because the wife is screwing the daughter's boyfriend. The daughter finds out, wants to leave. She disappears and leaves a disturbing voicemail on the wife's phone. And then all of a sudden, Olivia is called to find her. Olivia finds her. Olivia discovers the sex tape between the wife and the boyfriend. And now... She's like, oh my God, I, I sent her to the hotel. Lord, Lord Jesus, when, when Olivia got to that, uh, the, 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 the surgery room, the morgue, whatever, not the morgue, the uh, surgery room, when she got there and she, the look, oh, the look on Carrie Washington's face, and when she slammed that girl, <laughs> when she slammed that girl up against the wall, I was like, yes, give me some drama. That's what I'm talking about. That was hot. I thought that was hot. That was so, that was hot. She's like, no, I, ne I would never, I would never. I feel disgusted in myself, but I'm not a murderer. 
I'm like, bitch, you's a lie. You killed that girl because you ain't want the husband to find out. But it's all right, though, because your shit is going to be all over the news. And Olivia's like, I cannot help you with this case. I, there's, not, there's no way to spin this around. I can't help you. But Catherine says she's not the murderer. It's interesting because not very many times does, you know, scandal trickles into another episode with the same case. But they didn't close out the case at the end of this episode. Um, Abby visits Olivia to talk. Okay, so when, when she finds out, when Abby finds out what happened to Catherine, right? Abby goes to Olivia to talk about Catherine and Caitlyn, the whole thing. And Olivia's like, I'm, I'm not on the case anymore. I can't talk to you about this. I can't speak about the case. I'm not on the case no more. Um, that would be unethical for me to discuss the case. She's like, and Abby's like, oh, you, you can't talk to me about the case. You can't talk to me about the case. Why? Because I'm not one of your guardians that has to walk around and run around on your own back and call. And some shit she was saying. I'm like, okay, Abby. All right, girl. Then she, she finished reading Olivia. And she's like, bye, I will call her myself. No, Olivia looking at the door like, whatever. Let's get in. Let's get into when. When Olivia goes to visit Jake at his house unannounced. Now, first of all, you don't go to anybody's house unannounced. That's just something that you don't do. That's just something that you don't do. You don't do that. Don't do that. Jake opens the door. He's like, hello. Picking three like, hello, what's up? What you want? <laughs> hiding something, obviously hiding something, right? Olivia's like, uh, hello, open the door. Excuse me? <laughs> you come to my house unannounced, you want me to open the door? I'm working, Liv, what do you want? I'm working. She's like, what do you mean, what do you, what do you mean you're working? You don't have a job, open the door. He's like, no, I'm working. She's like, do you have a, a woman in there? Then she says, wait, don't answer that. Don't answer that. He was like, I wasn't. I wasn't going to. I'm like, ooh, Jay. But before, wait, before then, before then, wait, hold up, I missed something. When, when Olivia asked Jake to come to dinner, ooh, and, 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 and uh, Jake said, hell no. Basically, in so many words, Jake was like, you, I'm sorry, um, I'm not your boyfriend. I was like, oh, wait, hold up. <laughs> Olivia said, I know. Um, yeah, I know. Jay said, if I was your boyfriend, then I would, I would feel obligated to go to dinner, uh, with you and to meet your father, a man that, um, basically, uh, <laughs> tortured me and, and so forth and so on, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not your boyfriend. So because I'm not your boyfriend, I'm not going to dinner. <laughs> then he says, call me when you want me to do that thing to you. I was like, oh, damn. I need to be like that. I need to invoke my inner Jake. Oh my God, I need to invoke my inner Jake because I'm more or less, when I'm, when I'm liking someone, I'm more or less on the Olivia side. I need to be on the Jake side. Thank you, Shonda Rhimes. You are helping me to find myself because Jake plays no games. No games. I, I like that and that's how I need to be. But back to the fast forward to the, to the, car, uh, to the, uh, the apartment, Jake's apartment. He's like, I wasn't going to answer that because... I'm not your boyfriend. We're not in a relationship. I don't owe you an explanation. I was like, what? Say word. God damn, say word. And then Olivia's like, you know what? Forget this. I already know you don't have a woman in there. You want to be like this? Fuck this. And she walks off and she's like, I, I invited you to come to dinner with me and my father. You said no. I'm done. And then out of nowhere, Jay says, boom, close the door right on Olivia. <laughs> Yes! I was like, yes! God! Jake is a G. And I don't know where Jake got his vote of confidence from, but Jake is a G. He slammed that door on her face. He was like, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. Then we get to, what else we get to? Um, uh, Quinn. Quinn reading Huck and Olivia because Olivia decides to help Catherine out and Quinn uh, been gone for 24 hours dealing with Charlie's ass on the ground, kissing and making out and shit because they both alone. Some sadistic, crazy shit. Um, and so Quinn reads Huck and Olivia because Olivia and Huck just going on about their business, not even thinking about Quinn. Quinn comes in, hello. 
Uh, hello? I've been messing for 24 hours and y'all asses haven't even called. No motherfucking text. Y'all didn't even kick me. Y'all didn't even check my Instagram. Fuck this. This is why Harrison died. I'm out. I'm like, God damn. You all, you all right, Quinn? She got them together though, and it made them think. And that's why Hope visited her towards the end of the episode and was like, if you ever go MIA again, I'll look for you. I was like, oh shit. Quinn finally fitting inside the bubble. Um, when, okay, now we're gonna get to the, we gonna get to the motherfucking nitty gritty. Jay calls Olivia and says, I'm gonna go to dinner with your ass. After, after he'd been investigating Harrison's death and the death of the son of the president or leaking up to the son of the president and all this shit, I'm like, all right, so he already know something's going on. He, he, something's linked up, all right? But I didn't think it was the, I didn't think it was the father. I didn't think it was the father. When Olivia gets a call at, at dinner and she gets up because Huckers calling. <laughs> when I tell you Shonda Rhimes knows how to read a motherfucker for life. She reads down. She's like Iyala Van Zandt. She reads down. And so interpreting through, interpretation through Jake Ballard to Mr. Pope Jake Ballard got Mr. Pope together. He said, shut your old ass mouth up for one second. <laughs> then he says, there's an island that you can retreat to. And then when he said, when he said, or else I will tell Olivia that you killed her best friend and the president's son. When, when, when Mr. Pope got up so fast, his reaction, goddamn, I felt, I was like, I was like, if this motherfucker hit my hand, wait, cut, cut. I felt the knife, I felt the knife on my hand. They better go ahead and be stunned devils. That had to be like a fake hand man because <laughs> that the edit was too fast. The edit was way too fast. Ain't no way to hell, bah! And then miss the hand like that, fuck out of here. <laughs> that shit was hot. Mr. Pope said, you think you big and bad, huh? You think you gonna come for me? <laughs> he said, not in my house. I was like, ooh. Shy. I'm like, who better? The mother, the father, or Jake? The mother. The mother, the baddest bitch out of the three. But the mother ain't here no more. So, I don't know. This shit done got good. And now Jake, you know Jake. You know Jake was pissing his pants. You know Jake was pissing his pants at the end of that episode. Especially when the father said, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to see you, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, yo. These some crazy individuals. But Jake is scared now. Jake's scared now. I just don't know what's going to happen this season. It's going to get good and good and good. I'm Wesley from A Connection TV. I want y'all to leave messages below. I know y'all love Scandal like I love Scandal. And uh, if you're not subscribed for any particular insane reason, definitely subscribe because it's free to do. Like this video and share this video on Facebook and Twitter.